Hi everyone, welcome back to Earl Grey Books. I'm Ellie and today I'm doing a video talking about the books that I absolutely need to read before the end of the year. <laughs> so, yes, uh, as, as it comes to the end of every year, my answer for this is always like literally everything. But I picked out some particular ones that I really want to finish uh, before 2022 rolls around. So we've got two series to finish and then some other ones as you can see back here. So we're going to start with the series. Um, first up, I have these. You can probably guess from the size that these are some historical romances. So um, these are Sabrina Jeffries. My favourite um, historical romance author. So this is her Hellions of Halstead Hall series. Uh, I have the second one back here, which I I should have finished by the time this video goes up. Um, so I have the last four books in the series. Uh, what order do they go in? <laughs> that is a good question, isn't it? So. Book three is How to Woo a Reluctant Lady. Uh, four, I think, is To Wed a Wild Lord. Number five is A Lady Never Surrenders. And finally, uh, the last one is Twas the Night After Christmas. So I think I'm probably going to leave this one to December. But um, chances are that it'll take me November to read these three anyway. So I just think Christmas book, perfect. Probably going to add this to my Hemisphere Christmas Games TBR if we're honest. So I have that series. And then I have the last two books in the Girls with Sharp Sticks series. Uh, by Suzanne Young, so Girls with Razor Hearts and Girls with Rebel Souls. Um, yes, I just need to finish these series. Uh, this is like a pretty um, small, pretty small books. Um, I've just noticed that my TBR cart must be like turning the tops, or the like, get yeah, the top half of my books yellow <laughs> from the sun um okay maybe we're gonna turn around my tbr cart uh but yes really need to finish these and then we have uh these are all standalones except for this one this is legend born by tracy dion uh i started this one in like March and I literally read the first 250 pages and I was loving it and then I like put it down for something and I didn't pick it back up so would like to do that if at all possible I don't really have that much left um, it does have the tiniest writing known to a YA book ever um, but very excited to finish it. Uh, and then yes, yeah, some standalones. So we have Ariadne by Jennifer Saint. I was meant to read this. Percy is using his tray. I was meant to read this in November, no, October, um, for Scary Readathon. Didn't do it. So Hopefully I can get to it in November or in December. Uh, and then I have good old classic here. I have Emma by Jane Austen, which again I started in like, yeah, like March, April. And uh, I'm 300 pages in. I just really hate Emma. I really hate her as a character. <laughs> I just think she's like, so I've seen, um, big Austen fan, so I've seen many an adaptation of Emma. And the whole point of me reading this one was to watch the new one. And 
like any adaptations, my favorite is the like mini series. Um, I know I'll put a cover of that one here. Um, and I don't hate Emma in that. Like, she's not a great character, but she's not like I can appreciate the the way that she's like created um, and portrayed for the story. But she's like. <laughs> 10 times worse in the book. Like, I just really hate her. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's a, it's a struggle. But, like, I like the story and I like Austin's writing. Um, but yeah, I just really hate Emma. <laughs> so, um, this is also my second last Austin. So, like, next year of her main novels. So, like, next year I could read Sense and Sensibility and be done. And I don't know how I feel about that. So, there's also that. Uh, and then finally, gotta throw in a non-fiction. This is Vivian Mayer uh, by Pamela Banos. Um, she was a photographer and it's been a while since I studied her, so apologies if I get this wrong, but I think all of her work was discovered after she'd passed away. So like she never really shared any of her photography and like her stuff is, her stuff is pretty cool. Um, I might put a few um, photos up here of her, some of her work. Um, I will just talk and not have the book there so that they can go up. Uh, so this is one of the books that I have from it's one of the oldest books on my TBR, so uh, you might know if you've uh, been following along with my goals this year that one of my things was to read all the books that I had on my shelves from pre-2019. Um, that's not going to happen because I have I have four left, but three of them are Daphne du Maurier slash Daphne du Maurier related. So... Um, I don't want to just like read all three of those. So instead, um, I'm going to try and maybe finish one of them and read the other two next year. But the other one on that list is this one. So I figured I might as well give this a good go and see if I can get through it. Um, I actually bought this book at uh, MoMA. So um, just pretending that I'm back in New York in all those beautiful art galleries and um, things like that. But yes, excited to read this because I don't really know anything about her as a person. Um, I studied her in a photography elective that we, that we, that I took and um, I was like immediately intrigued by her, um, her work. So excited. To give this one a go and learn more. So yes, that is the list. Like I said, there are millions of others, but uh, this is what we're working with and hopefully we can get through some of them. Um, I am filming this a week ahead, so I might even start some of them before and um, work on getting them done. But that is all for today. I will see you all on Monday with my next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.